Hi everyone, Wintermute here with a new tutorial about how to make pixel art in Blender 2.8. I'll be showing you how to model, not that there's much modeling going on, uh, shade, and animate this. And then we'll do a little bit of compositing on top to turn this into a cool uh, pixel art animation, which I'll show you how I used in one of my games for a recent game jam. So let's get started. First, to make the earth, we're going to need just a normal UV sphere. Uh, make sure you set the shade smooth. And that's all the modeling we'll be doing today. So we're going to be adding a new material, we'll call this earth. And we're going to add an image texture. Now I'll give you the link to this image texture. It's from NASA. And it's, I think, in the public domain. So I probably won't get in trouble for using it. Uh, and that link's going to be down in the description. So we're not going to be using these real colors, we're going to stylize it for a cool look. So make sure, first of all, that your render engine is set to Eevee, otherwise you're not going to be able to find this node. So you're going to search for shader to RGB, and you'll attach it here. And you see that doesn't do anything, because first we need to add a color ramp, and we'll set it to constant. So right now, uh, since we have it all black, we can't see anything. But when we change the position of the slider, we can see that more white parts emerge. And you can kind of get an idea of what this node is for. It does a lot of uh, non-photorealistic rendering. It's really useful for that like anime tune effect. But applying it to this sort of texture doesn't really give the best result, but that doesn't really matter because we're making pixel art today. So let's change the colors a little bit. And I'll let you fiddle around with this. I like having just four colors, and they're going to be pretty close together. So this first one is going to be the color of the deep ocean, so we'll change it to like a nice azure. Then a lighter blue for some of the shallows. Then we have a yellowish green for the land. And a little bit of a darker yellow for the rest of it. So you can see that looks pretty good, if not super realistic. You can always change the positions of these of these sliders in order to determine where all these patches of color are. And I think that looks good enough for now. Next, we're going to make uh, a layer of clouds. So add another sphere. Oops, not like this here. A normal UV sphere. Scale it up just a little bit. This is going to be our cloud layer. Set to shade smooth like the other one. And we'll make a new material. We'll call it clouds. So again, delete this shader. We don't need it. We'll add another image texture, which I will link again in the description. So Right now, Eevee doesn't support transparency super well, and you actually have to change something in the settings for it to work. But we'll do that in a moment. So right now, we're not actually going to co connect this to the surface output. What we're going to use uh, this for is a factor input to the um, uh, mix shader, which we're going to be adding right now. Oops. Mix. And so we put this in the factor input, and we're going to hook up the other colors. So we want to have an emission shader, and we also want to have a transparent shader. And we'll attach them like this. So you can see how this uh, cloud layer is like shown, but partially, and it's kind of at a low resolution. So right now we're going to set this blend mode to alpha blend. And so we've got the data working. But right now, generally with pixel art, you don't want to have too many colors. It's not generally supposed to be so complex. So we're going to make this, we're going to tune this cloud layer a little bit. So we're going to add another color ramp. And we'll attach it in between this. And we're going to use this to control how much white space and transparency there is. So set this to constant again. 
And now we're just going to move along the white part of this in order to, to determine where the clouds are. So if you want more clouds, you can just move it all the way to the end. Not all the way to the end, most of the way to the end. And that's pretty much it for the shading. Alright, so we're going to want to render this um, as a square, because I think that would be more efficient. So hit 1 to focus the camera on the, or sorry, the viewport on the uh, face on the y-axis, and then control alt 0 to set the camera to that position. And then we're going to change the resolution of this. So I'd go maybe 256 by 256. It doesn't have to be that high, but this number really determines how we're going to pixelate it. And so we have this effect. And we're going to animate the rotation in a bit, but first, Let's pixelate it. So doing this is actually really easy. All you have to do is first we are going to scale it down. And to, uh, duplicate this and put it on the other side. And we'll leave a space in the middle for a pixel bias now. And let's have a render first just to see how this looks. So first we're going to scale it down say to 0 0.2 and then we're going to take the inverse of this so that would be 5 and we're going to scale it up by that same amount so what this does is it makes it a lot smaller this pixelate applies to it and kind of lumps together similar looking nodes sorry similar looking colors into the same one and then it scales it back up so this Make sure these are both inverses, uh, like you can multiply them and they become one. Otherwise, this is going to get stretched. And also, they have to be the same. Now, if we scale this, if we change the scaling to be even smaller, like 0.1, this pixel effect will be considerably more pronounced. And quick maths, what's the inverse? Good, good. So that doesn't look like anything. Right now for this resolution of 256 by 256, you might want to actually set it to something like 0 0.3 and not point, or 3.33 or even higher. Maybe 0 0.5 is a bit too much. 0.4 and 2.5 okay so that's looking good enough right now so uh, let's make a bit of adjustments we're going to want to change the film settings and make sure the background is transparent because we're going to be exporting this uh, to be like a, a sprite you don't really need any of these effects, they're not really going to do anything because we don't have shading and rendering bloom on a transparent background is, a kind, of, is kind of tricky, so it's not really going to make a difference. So right now this is all you really need, and so let's animate it. Let's make this say 30 frames long. Um, what I like to do is make this cloud layer rotate along the z-axis. Well, we'll have both things rotate along the z-axis. It looks a little weird if they rotate kind of at the same time. And we also want this animation to loop. Um, like, we want to have it be able to be the same when the animation is done, so you won't be able to tell, so we can have like an infinite loop. So I'm going to make this cloud layer move at twice the speed. So how are we going to do that? We need to have both turn a multiple of 360, so I'll just make this cloud layer move two full turns, whereas this earth layer is only going to make one. Let's animate this earth first, doesn't really matter which one you do. So we're going to go into the object settings, make sure you're at frame one. 
and you can keyframe the rotation by hitting I, rotation, or mousing over any of these and hitting I. Then we're going to go to frame 30 and we're going to rotate it around the Z axis by twice 360, so 720. Hit I again. Oops, right, we're only moving this at half the speed, so only 360. And we can see how this moves. Now you can also see how it like slows down and starts up again, and we don't want that. We just want a smooth rotation, but we'll change both of them together. Now this one is going to move, so hit Alt-R if these aren't the same, uh, aren't zero. Make sure you go to frame one, set your rotation to zero, keyframe it. And now here we turn it to 720. Now if it's not a multiple of 360, what it's going to do is like do a half turn or something, and then it's going to loop, and that's going to look really bad, so don't do that. So right now we're going to get rid of this acceleration thing. So just go to the animation uh, tab, hit T, and we're going to change the interpolation. Right now it's kind of trying to smooth out the rotation so it, like, it doesn't like accelerate instantly, but what we, we actually want it to do that, so we're going to change it to linear interpolation. So we just changed the outer layer, now we're going to change the inner one, so make sure you just select it, T, and then change the interpolation to linear, and there we go. Uh, since I'm going to be using Unity to do this, I can just change the speed, because this is a little bit fast, I'll change the frame rate to something a lot lower when I actually implement this. For right now we have our planet, so we just go to this uh, camera view by hitting zero, and we can render it now. So I'll render this and I'll show you how it looks. And this is how it looks in game. This is a different model, but it's the same technique. And it looks pretty cool, right? So if you use this effect, uh, I hope it's useful for you. And you can do a lot of stuff with this. I might make a tutorial later about how to do this procedurally, making like the cloud layer. Uh, and the planet procedurally, but I need to do a little bit more research on that, and I'll make another video about this game sometime soon. Uh, so that's it. If you like this video and you want to support me, you can always subscribe uh, and share it, and that would be greatly appreciated. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.